and welcome to another DaVinci Basics tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to reframe Insta1 360 vid files. The reason I'm using Insta 361 vid files is because I have an Insta 361 360 camera. I don't have any other cameras. I don't know whether this technique will work for other 360 cameras. I'm pretty certain it should do though. Anyway, let's get on with the tutorial. Okay, well here we are in the main edit screen of DaVinci Resolve. Now before we go any further, there's two very important things that need to be done. First of all, have you installed Carter in DaVinci Resolve? If you haven't installed Carter, or you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to install Carter. There's a separate video showing you how to do this. The link will be down below in the comments. The second thing we need to do, well, DaVinci Resolve won't import Insta1360 vid files directly. So what we need to do is we need to convert them to MP4. And the way we do that is in Insta Studio. And I'll quickly show you how to do that. It's very simple. And at the same time, I'm going to trim the file down to the size that I need. Anyway, those are the two things that we must do before we go any further. Here's working in Insta360 Studio to convert the files so that DaVinci will understand them. OK, well, here we are in the Insta1 main screen, which I'm sure you're very familiar with. First of all, we've got to go and get our files. So we'll just open our files. In this case, I'm looking for vid05, which is the file that I'm going to be working with. You need to work with vid files for this, not the LRV files. So make sure you load the right files. Or the .insv, I think that they are. Anyway, it's just loading the data in, as you can see. That's the 360 film. Now, I've already pre-trimmed this to the length that I'm working at. But you can pre-trim these to, to any length you like. That's all we're going to do. It's, I've just trimmed it. It's only uh, it's only about two minutes that I've trimmed because I need to show you with this. So what we're going to do now is going to come down. Once you're done on trimming, we're going to come down to the export. Click Start Export. Make sure you click 360 video. Very important. Don't click Reframe video. Click 360 video. Give the file a name. You can give it whatever you like, name you like. But I'm going to leave it as it is. In fact, now what I'll do is I'll change it to. Uh, Bus Antics, which is what we'll call it. I've changed, I've given it the file name. Um, bit rate set at 200. Leave the resolution at the resolution that's set here. With the encoding format, change that to ProRes 422. The reason for that is very simple. ProRes 422 gives you the best quality output for the compressed video file. It's the old story, rubbish in, rubbish out. So the higher the quality film you can get in, a higher quality video you can get into DaVinci Resolve, the higher quality the end product will be. So we want to use ProRes 422, not H.264 or H.265, but ProRes 422 to compress this. And then just click Start Export and let Insta1 get on with it. That takes, in this case, that'll take about five minutes. So then we go back to DaVinci Resolve. OK, well, here we are in the main DaVinci Resolve edit screen. Now, before we do anything else, we've got to change some project settings. So we come up here and we go File, Project Settings. Just check that everything's OK as we've got Master Settings. Playback Frame Rate 24 to start the top. Timeline Resolution Ultra HD 3840 by 2160. That is the highest resolution you can have in DaVinci Resolve free version. If you want a higher resolution, you'll have to pay for DaVinci Resolve Studio. So we'll work in 4K, which is uh, Ultra HD at the moment. Make sure that's correct. Next thing we do is we come down to our timeline and we set it at 30 frames per second because that's what I recorded everything in. We come down here and we look for image scaling. Now this is very important. If you miss this step, you're going to have problems. Come to image scaling, and where it says mismatch resolution files, click and set stretch frame to all corners. If you don't do that, you will have yellow, no black, black boxes top and bottom of your video, even if it's reframed. So you need to stretch the frame to all corners. Then click save. Next thing to do is put some clips in our media pool, which I'm going to drag and drop the file that we actually produced in Insta1360 Studio a little while ago. 
Now it's going to ask you if you want to change the project frame rate, and the answer is no, don't change because we've already sorted it out. So click don't change. And there's our bus antics movie. Next thing to do is to put it onto our timeline. We put it onto our timeline. And there it is, as you can see, it's a 360 video. Now, what happens next? Well, we come up here and we click effects. Yours might be in a slightly different place, but that's where mine is. Click effects. What we're looking for is we're looking for Carter VR. This is what we installed earlier. If you haven't installed Carter VR, you need to go back to the beginning of this clip to find out what to do to install Carter VR. We find Carter VR, open that up, click it, and we've got viewer, Carter KR Reframe 360 Ultra. If you highlight it, look, it actually gives you a preview of what it is. As you can see the difference, it's straight away, it's reframed from equi rectangular to a standard 16 by nine. So all we do is drag and drop that onto our timeline. Okay, so we've dropped the reframe ultra onto our timeline. What do we do next? Well, we come up here and turn on inspector. If you look, you've got video, audio, effects. Click effects, and now we've got the car to controls. There's a couple of adjustments we need to make here before we go any further. The first one is the field of view. That's how wide it is we're seeing. And I generally set this at about 0 0.9. That gives me a 0.9 field of view. The next thing is the rectilinear projection. If you look at this bus shelter, can you see how the uprights are bending like that? And the same with the wall, it's bending. What we can do is we can actually straighten that out. Now, I generally find about 0.7 works for me. 0 0.7 is, is the setting that works for me, but you could experiment with it. I'm gonna set it at 0 0.7. As you can see, that's straightened out quite nicely. I don't touch anything else now. I'll go through the, I don't touch anything else there now for the moment. I'll go through the control view. We've got the pitch control. Now pitch control controls the up and down. I'll show you, look. See, we're looking up and we're looking down. The next control is the yaw control. That is the left and right. So that looks left, that looks right, like this. Let me show you. See, we're looking left, and now we're looking right. And the last one is the roll control. That is that is the horizon. Imagine this is your horizon. It rolls it that way or that way, like this. Look. There you go, you see? You can play about with these, but don't worry if you get it all wrong. If you look, under each time you move them, underneath each one, there's a little white dot. If you click that, it returns it back to the center. Now, what do we do? Well, first of all, in this video, I want to start with me, with the camera facing me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the yaw control to bring it round to where I am, which I think is about there. And I need to alter the pitch as well. So to bring me into, into shot, there we go. That's what I wanna do. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set some keyframes. If you look at these white dots here, the first keyframe I'm going to set is the field of view. And I don't want that changed throughout the thing, so I've set that one. I'm now setting the pitch, your and roll, and the rectilinear projection, and the tiny planet projection again. I'm not going to change the rectilinear, or the tiny planet, or the field of view. I'm just going to change the pitch, your and roll. But I'm setting those keyframes now as a way of as the baseline that's where i'm going to start from so i'm using my keyboard now and i want to gradually pan around to the bus stop so let's go forward a bit you can use the j and k and l keys to do this as well um if you use the j key uh in combination with the k key it'll slow it down or if you use the L key in combination with the K key, it slows it down. So about there, that's about 19 seconds in. I want to look at the bus stop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the yaw. And you'll notice as I change the yaw,
See, it's set a keyframe. It's, it's actually automatically set a keyframe. So let me just change the pitch. And it's set another keyframe. Now, if we go back to the beginning, that should slowly change from my position to the bus stop. Exactly what it's doing. And what I did notice is my original position isn't right. So we can easily alter that. We can do that several ways. We can actually go to the point of the moving we want to do it using the uh, playhead. Or we can just go back to the last keyframe set. So let's go back to that one. Let's go to the first keyframe. And let's look at where I was. And so I want to start with the pitch down, I think. Yep. Pitch your mouse. So I've set those keyframes there. That should now start from there and carry on. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to wind forward a little bit. And I'm just going to set a second set of keyframes just to make sure that we're still in that area. There we go. And that's automatically set the keyframes. And then we'll come back to the beginning and we'll play that. Yes, that's exactly what I want to do. Now that's taking a long time to do. We can actually shorten the way that it does that by deleting the keyframes and putting new frames in. Let me show you. So if we do that and we go back to the last keyframes, we just delete them, which is that one there and that one there. Go back and I want the change to be about there which is a lot quicker than before. So we stop there, and now we change the keyframes and put the new keyframes in. So we change the yaw, and we change the pitch. Let's have a look at that, see if that goes a lot faster. Yes, it does. Not much faster, but it actually goes a lot faster. So you can see I'm constantly changing the keyframes as I'm going along. Okay, we've got to that position there. I want to stay at that position for a little while, so I'm just going to roll forward. I'm just going to set a keyframe for the pitch and yaw so it doesn't change. Go forward a bit more. Now I want to stop and look at the bus. So what I'm going to do is set a keyframe there for the pitch and yaw. Go forward just a couple of frames. And now I'm going to change the pitch to look at the bus. There we go, and just change the pitch, and then carry on playing forward. And that's what it looks like. Now, here's an amazing thing about Car of VR. You can actually change it while you're playing. So if I find that pitch, and if I go back to the beginning, and I want that to be a bit quicker, I can actually change the pitch in your while it's playing. So let me just change the pitch and more. There we go. I've actually changed it while it's playing and that's put new keyframes in to where I wanted to go. Okay, that's about it for this tutorial, which is purely designed to get you up and running with reframing in DaVinci Resolve. Um, it's very, very simple to do. All I suggest you do is you just play about with it and have fun. If you make a mistake, just go back to the keyframe and delete it. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you in Fusion how you can really get in there and change the keyframes and everything else. So look out for that tutorial. Meanwhile, have fun with the reframing.